If you want to go to the next level, please recognize some of the things that you need to let go of to be able to go to the next level. This is not about the property that you're bringing to a joint venture partner. The joint venture partner says, do you have an accountant and a bookkeeper? And you say, no, actually, to keep costs down, I do it myself. And the joint venture partner says, see you later. Okay? So there's some things that if you want to level up, that you've got to understand that a partner's going to want to see, they're going to want to see that you're going to the next level. What's up, YouTube? Jeff Weibo here. So, you know, I sponsor on RIA, a local event here in London, Ontario. Mandy Branham gave an amazing talk. She is a JV queen. If you guys want to learn anything about joint ventures, stick around, comment below in the video, and here it is. Okay. So, uh, along the 10X line, I've created an elevation of success graph. Okay. And I want you to, to know that there's the level of investor, the time that you have involved, and the money line. Okay, and the, 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 this is where you're going to start to make money, okay? And the first level of success that I call is, I call it the dabbler, okay? They're like, ooh, I've thought about that before. Really? <laughs> How much time do you put into it? None. What's your return? Negative two. Why? Because they thought, da they started dabbling in it two years ago. But they've done nothing. They've done nothing but fear mongering. They've done nothing but listen to other people's horror stories. They've done nothing, okay? They've never looked at a, they maybe gone to an open house. It's a single family home that means nothing to the real estate investor world. So the next one, I'll call them the worker. How much time do they put in? Lots. What's their return? They're getting a return, okay? They're one timing, they're one times their effort that they're putting in. But keep in mind that this is the money line. So even though you're getting 1% return, you're still, not, you're still not achieving much over the money line. And we'll touch on that a little bit later about some of the, the myths or the realities of, of the expert real estate investor. Things that, some bubbles we might need to pop, okay? So, so over the money line, you have an expert investor. They're very focused, okay? and they're making three times the money, okay? Now many of you might think, if I was an expert investor, and I was very focused, making three times the amount of money, I could, what do you think? Retire. 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 Oh my God, I can retire. I'm an expert level investor. I'm gonna like burst that bubble right now, you can't retire, okay? It's not, you're not, ready to, you're not ready to retire if you're an expert investor, that you're very focused in your time, okay? So your time right now is still all you, okay? So from your dabbler, you're a worker, and you're an expert, it's all your time. And it, you know, um, I think I heard it at dinner. I think I heard it at dinner. I think it said, when I make, no, it wasn't, it was on a coaching call just before dinner. When I make $20 an hour, I'll be able to pay somebody 15. Right? When I'm making $20 an hour in my real estate business, I'll be able to pay somebody $15 an hour, which still gives me a $5 an hour spread. But I say, that's still all you. You're still only working on your effort to be able to grow your real estate business. Okay? And then, here's the other thing, I've, I've indicated the length of time that you might have to be or you choose to be. I really like to use those words a lot, okay? Um, I like to say I choose things. I choose where I am today because if there's ever an excuse that I put in front of the words, this is where I am because, because my mother, you know, babied me for so many years because I had a job that wouldn't let me go or whatever and you're using other things as your excuse, okay? I choose where I am today in life because I choose it, okay? If I want to be more and have more, I choose it I will get there, okay? So this is, this is your expert. Most people think that they can retire on their expert. Next level up, influencer, okay? They have leveraged their time very, very well to be able to realize the value of What's a couple things that you might be able to, as you level up your investing, you might be able to leverage your time on? 
What are a couple of ways that you could leverage your time? Yeah? Figure out how people come to you instead of you one of them. Okay, yeah. So having people come to you instead of you always going to them. Yeah? Leverage your time. Bookkeepers? Just outsourcing as much as possible. Outsourcing. What else? Keep, what, what else? What are some Property examples? Management. Property manage? Oh, ding, ding, ding! <laughs> Here, say that again. You leverage your time. time through property management. How many people are still potentially doing their own property management? How would I say this again? It's okay if you choose to want to be an expert level investor. It's okay if you want to be a worker. All of these things are okay. I didn't say that this was going to be a fun thing that you're going to wake up to what level of investor you are. Um, but what I'm, what I'm acknowledging to you is if you want to go to the next level, please recognize some of the things that you need to let go of to be able to go to the next level. Okay? I listened to a podcast one time, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And uh, it's like at the very end of the podcast, and it's called Ask Robert. And this one guy was like, Robert, I've got this really good opportunity. I thought I would ask you if you wanted to invest. That's pretty much it, right? And Robert says, who's your accountant? And he goes, oh, I do my own accounting, my own bookkeeping. Robert goes, I'm not interested. <laughs> Boom! He's not even talked about the deal. This is not about the property that you're bringing to a joint venture partner. The joint venture partner says, do you have an accountant and a bookkeeper? And you say, no, actually, to keep costs down, I do it myself. And the joint venture partner says, see you later. Okay? So there's some things that if you want to level up, that you got to understand that a partner's going to want to see, they're going to want to see that you're going to the next level. Okay? Uh, what's another good one? Dragon's Den. Have you ever seen them? Uh, I mean, so I sit on the investor side. Okay? And I'm watching them evaluate the people that are bringing in their deals. It's, it, actually, now I'm going to, you're welcome. Uh, go and watch that show differently and sit on the side of the investors and listen to the questions that the investors, the people that have the money, are asking to the people who have the deals, okay? And there was this one, and she was like all over this product, it's all so great, and um, I'm horrible with names because it's really not important, but he says, so are you doing this full time? She says, no, I still have a job. Deal done, he was out, he said, thank you so very much, I'm not interested in your deal. The deal was phenomenal. Now, she got picked up by another investor, but the point was that he asked her if she was full-time at this, okay? So you're gonna realize that as you go to the next level, you're gonna wanna realize when, do I stay in my job because I want, I have to, or I choose to, or do I take the leap and leave but there's potential partners and private money lenders and whatnot that are gonna to come to me just because I've taken that next level and I'm like, I'm all in. Like, I'm shitting my pants here. <laughs> Seriously, when I left my job, I called two people, because only two people did I believe were gonna support me in the way that I thought they would. My husband was not one of them, even though he was, <laughs> he was one that knew that I was signing the letter and I was giving them the letter of intent. I called two people. One was a full-time real estate investor, Andy Brennan. And he was like, welcome to the club. This is not gonna be easy, okay? And the other one was one of my, my mastermind people. And she just said, let's just talk this through. Let's just make sure that you realize what you need to get into, what you need to do, the pros and cons of this. And I'm like, I already ended in the letter. <laughs> I don't want any more, okay? And I go home and we had this gentleman staying with us at the time. And uh, I told him that I left a $27 an hour job at the hospital that I'd had for eight years. And he goes, you're ridiculous. I can't believe you're doing this. <laughs> and he's one of my staff. And uh, we just had a Christmas party on Friday night. Now he's a little intoxicated. But he said, <laughs> I thought you were crazy. And you've turned out to be the most intelligent person that I know. Now, he doesn't know a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that, okay? But there's this point of time, okay? So there's an elevation of success that I want to say that if you make a decision and you look around and you're like, people are going to think I'm either like ridiculously stupid 
or ridiculously smart, okay, that's the line that you're walking, okay? You're either a genius or an idiot. A genius or an idiot, right? And yes, that's maybe the line that Einstein walked, but that's kind of where you need to go. You're like, either this property is going to be a home run to a home run, or it's like the biggest dive, I can't believe I, I got sucked into it, okay? And depending on how you manage it, that's the line that you're walking when you're kind of deciding if I'm a genius or am I, or am I an idiot, okay? And as you level up, you're going to find yourself in more of these positions. I just hired an office manager. My husband goes, you're not even paying yourself. How are you going to afford to pay somebody else? I'm like, I don't know. But I know that if I don't hire her, I can't keep growing. So it's, it's almost like if you don't know how you're going to do it, if you didn't do this crazy thing, you need to do the crazy thing. Is that buy another property? Is that finance it in a way that you never thought you would before? Is that leave a job? I'm not, disclaimer, I'm not asking anyone to leave their job. I'm just, I'm, what I'm sharing with you is it's a lot harder to actually leave your job. I don't know how many people I've talked to and they're like, yeah, I'd like to leave my job in five years. Really? Really? What <coughs> level of investor are you? What level of money are you, okay? I'm not saying that it can't be done. I'm just not painting that, that, that yellow brick road to be able to say to do it. Doug and Anna, you guys retired earlier than you thought. It was not easy. It was a lot of sweaty bullet bullets. Like we wanted to make sure because we're both very analytical, you know, IT background, and I'm a business consultant, so we took a lot of time ahead of time to say, is this the right time to do this? And we definitely condensed our uh, timeline, you know, dramatically reduced it to, we retired in three years from when we first started real estate investing. So we, we, had, we left our day jobs, I should say. We're not retired, we're now to go most of our time in real estate. So. Uh, I was at John Quick, he's a gentleman that healed his own brain last night, and, uh, and he said, yeah, most of us crazy entrepreneurs can't work for somebody. I can't work for somebody for 40 hours, 9 to 5. Crazy! Instead, I'm going to be an entrepreneur and I'm going to work 80 hours. <laughs> right? It seems ridiculous. I had a staff member that said, why are you asking me how many hours I work? Because if I turn the question on you, I know that you're going to have work more than me. And, and it's so true because I want to work. I work when I want to work. Um, and then there's times that I work just because, right? Um, because I have to, because I want to. But, but, I'm, but I'm putting in the time and the effort now for the long-term gain down the road. This is not a get-rich-quick kind of game. If it's a game, it's not a game. Every life is a game. It's fun. Um, but it is a get rich slow kind of thing, so you have to understand that the more effort you put in today, the more results that you're going to have down the road. So, the top of the level of elevation of success, you're the movement maker. Time is suspended. And I was like, I said to Debbie Gilbert, I said, Debbie, how do I explain suspended, right? She's like, you got little minions running around in all these kind of spots, and you can just kind of be suspended up on top, looking around at everything that's going on, okay? So I took a phone call today from a property management from my property management company. I talked to Larry today, who's who's heading my construction company, um, doing our coach house, and and I was in a property doing a home inspection today, and I need three more properties. So my time, and then I'm here here doing what I love to do. My time is suspended. So I've got all these people doing all these different things for me. But look at the money factor. You're going to a ten times factor with with Grant Cardone. This is how he describes it, okay? You've got to be able to step away from things to be able to understand the value of growth within your real estate portfolio, okay? And until you're able to do that and you're able to give it up, I was describing to Cheryl tonight that um, uh, as a female, I have, there's a benefit and a drawback of being a female, okay? Um, so Erwin Zito on his podcast one time said to me, he goes, so you're the GC, and I was like, Huh, a GC? Am I the GC? I'm the GC! I am the GC! I'm the general contractor. But I have no idea how to frame, how to plumb, how to do electrical, okay? But I'm smart enough to be able to know how to hire the right people to do all of these things. So as a female, the benefit is I don't know how to plumb. 
But that's kind of a drawback because I don't know how to plumb. Okay? But a male in my same part, they know how to plumb. So they usually feel compelled to plumb. I cannot plumb. I can't do it. I don't know how to do it. I mean, I probably could tell you, you need to put this piece in here, and you need a couple pieces, and it takes some glue, and you just cut it. And I, I could probably like make my way through a YouTube video on how to plumb something. But the point is that it's a benefit that I can't plumb, but it's kind of a drawback that I can't plumb. But guess what? I can plumb 10 properties all at once. But a male sometimes gets stuck that they can plumb one property, so they actually plumb it themselves. Okay? So there are times when you're working on minions and you need to have people that do your team. You need to understand that even if I can do it, the value of me not doing it is more beneficial than me actually being the person in there doing it. And this goes back to Quentin D'Souza. Okay guys, what did you learn from that? Let me know down below. If you guys are new to this channel, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. Lots of great videos upcoming. Thank you guys. See you on the next video. Bye.